Melissa George and I'm a Walguru cover woman and we're actually on uh, Yunbanan which is my traditional country and it's better known to most people as Magnetic Island and we're in, located in North Queensland. I'm a traditional owner of this uh, land of Yunbanan and uh, my people were here before the first settlers came in 1860. It's pretty specky, I love it. And actually where we're standing is the head of Gubble and Gubble is a carpet snake that created um, the area from Hinchinbrook down here through Cape Cleveland and particularly where we are at Jeffrey Bay and on this headland, this is a resting place uh, of Gubble. Being a traditional owner means that um, you are uh, connected to a certain place, but essentially you know, you have a responsibility and an obligation to manage your country regardless of where you are. As a traditional owner, you know, for something that you have to be conscious of, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I mean, managing country. You know, there's a lot of impacts that happen on country which are out of your control. One of the things my grandfather always says that, you know, regardless of what happens, you know, we just need to be recognised that this is our our country, and through that recognition, we then can get engaged and in, in participate in managing effectively. It is a little bit difficult at times for traditional owners to get back in, involved in managing their country again. But you know, I think with the support that's been um, given by various governments, we're starting to actually see that happen more often now. Essentially, the, the Australian government has a number of programs which um, support um, in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's involvement in looking after country. I think two of those big eyed um, programs are the Indigenous Protected Area Program and the Working on Country Program. IPAs, Indigenous Protected Areas, they essentially make up uh, 23 million hectares of Australia's protected area of state. Uh, Working on Country, on the other hand, is um, a program that was established to employ rangers to carry out land and sea management activity. I think in Australia there's around 700 uh, rangers, you know, you see them, they're out on country, they've got their shirts on, their badges, they're very proud of being able to um, look after their country and be recognised by being paid properly to do so. They're very, you know, important programs, not only for the Commonwealth Government but also for for communities because, um, you know, they provide opportunities for employment and they provide opportunities for people to be able to carry out their obligations and responsibilities to their country. The idea of the World Indigenous Network, um, sort of just the, the concept in itself supports the, what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are doing on in Australia and it also recognises the importance of developing a process for, for people to be able to talk to each other and share experience and support the transfer of traditional knowledge at a community level. And I think the World Indigenous Network is going to um, not only be able to create that opportunity within Australia but also share the experience internationally with other First Nations attached to their country or their local territories and, and then have the ability to be able to continue sharing our experience and our knowledge and our stories. This place here uh, is very uh, special to me. I sort of come here every wet season and sort of we only get water like this after we get rain and that's probably two, three months a year maybe if we're lucky. So it's just got a really, you know, it's a good place. I've always brought my kids here when they were growing up and you know, it's beautiful. It's up in the middle of the bush and you know, I wouldn't be anywhere else except of course, maybe next to the sea, you know. <laughs> <laughs>